we make it. Hey, how many guys are in there anyway? Hey, where's the star? Don't worry, he's in there. Thanks, lady. Kind of cozy, wasn't it? <laughs> Give us a lift, lady. Okay. You're my little pin-up girl. Honestly, you are. How would you like some coffee? A donut, an apple, a candy bar. Won't you be my pinup girl? Give a guy a break. The best that we can give you is cocoa, a cookie, a piece of angel cake. I have to have that smile before me, no matter where. Some nice old fashioned mince pie, like your mama used to bake back home. Do I love my pin up girl with all my heart and soul? I'm sure I understand you, but I'm here to hand you a hot dog on a roll. We surely understand you, but we're here to hand you a weenie on a roll. Send his baby a note, and this is exactly what he wrote. Quote, honey, don't worry your head about those pinup girls you've read about. For you most certainly know you're my little pinup girl. Honestly, you are. To me, you have the grace of an angel, a face of a movie star. You're my little pinup girl. Though we are apart, when I'm in Sleepy Willow, you're pinned on my pillow and also in my heart. I have to have that smile before me. No matter where I roam, that twinkle in your eyes can warm me like a fireside at home. Do I love my pinup girl? Bet your life I do. So, baby, keep a grinning. Remember, I'm pinning my hopes on you. Your pin up girl. Bet your life we do. Do, 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 do. Well, baby, keep a grinning. Remember, I'm pinning all my hopes on you.
Jones. Yes? I'm a deputation from Company B. I got a protest to read to you. A proclamation from the men of Company B in protest to Laurie Jones. Whereas the men of Company B, of which I am one, <laughs> have enjoyed the Masuli USO canteen. And whereas such enjoyment was caused by the charming presence of Miss Laurie Jones. Therefore, be it resolved that Company B here with lodges formal protest and beg Ms. Jones to call off her trip to Washington, D.C. and stick right here in town where we need her. Whereas. Yeah. Well, I think it's awfully sweet of you, but, well, I've already given my promise to the USO in Washington that I'd go with one of their road shows. Oh, no. Oh. They're sending me to all their camps, and I think they're going to make me an honorary colonel. Really? Uh -huh. Laurie Jones, how can you stand up? They were even going to send a military escort to take me to the train tonight, but I thought that was too much. That is too much. Way too much. What's with her? Well, if you gotta go, you gotta go. But what about those pinup pictures you promised us? Yeah, how about yeah. Yeah. I have them all ready for you. Come on over to the counter. Come on, let's go. Say, do you know where I can find Lori Jones? Yeah, but I ain't gonna tell you. Come on, Laurie. I was the first one here. Me too, Laurie. Come on in, Laurie. You promised me one. It says the same on each of them. With love, Laurie. Laurie. Oh, hello. Here's the last one. That's all, fellas. Come on, Laurie. We'd better hurry. Well, I think I'll have to say goodbye unless a few of you want to see Kate Pritchard and me to the station. What do you mean a few of us? We'll all go, huh, fellas? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, Laurie, don't you remember? I'm the guy you became engaged to last night. George, of course. I'm supposed to take you to the station alone. What do you mean, alone? Get a load of this guy. Where do you guy. get that? Where do you go? Wait a minute. I know how I can settle it, fellas. George will go with me, and you'll go with Kay, but we'll all be together. How's that? Well, that's taking my clothes off with just that little curtain between us and the world. Oh, don't be silly, Kay. What are you afraid of? Why are you so brave? You've never been in a Pullman before. Oh, yes, I have. When I visited my uncle in California. You've never been out of Missouri in your life. Lori, sometimes someone's going to catch up with you good. You'll never get away with making the people back home believe you've gone to Washington to join a USO show. Oh, I don't know why you just didn't tell them the honest truth. And let them know we're only going to work as stenographers for civil service. Why should I? Because it's the truth. Well, maybe it is right now, but something could change it, couldn't it? When you let people believe things that aren't so, it's lying. Like letting that Marine who brought us to the train think he's engaged to you. You have about six other boys thinking the same thing. Well, they want to think it. Besides, I like being nice to the boys in service. Anyway, I'll probably never even see them again. Oh! You better not see them again. At least not all at the same time. Oh, boy. Why do you always have to tell fibs? I don't tell fibs. Why? I just make things up. It's certainly no thrill just pushing a typewriter and eating drugstore lunches and being a fixture in an office. Just the same, I'm thrilled with being just what we are. Imagine us in Washington Sunday morning. Imagine us in New York Sunday morning. Gee, you want to be... Laura Jones! Oh, I knew I shouldn't have come with you. If you start planning anything funny... Why not? We don't have to report for work until Monday. But, Lori... Oh, I won't listen to you. And besides, we promised my aunt in Baltimore that we'd visit her Sunday. And, well, if we don't show up... We can tell her our train was wrecked. There you go again. Why? <laughs> Why, Tommy Dooley, one of the Navy heroes from Guadalcanal, is arriving. Okay, our first thriller. We're only off the train two minutes. Here he comes now. Hiya, big boy. Welcome to New York. 
Uh, I'm afraid I don't remember. You don't? <laughs> Mabel? No, nope. try again. <laughs> Fifi? No. Nope. Here, maybe I got a better memory. Stand back and let her keep trying. I think I'm getting warmer. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that girl? His fiance? No, ma'am. That's Miss Molly McKay, a nightclub entertainer. She sure loves heroes and she meets them all. If they're all like him, it must be a wonderful hobby. Oh, just call me Molly. And don't you dare let me see you looking lonesome. Well, grab a wing, sailor. We're going places. Oh, just a minute, lady. Don't you think she we... is thinking? Whatever it is, I'm for it. Come on, let's go. Well, that's our first thrill. Let's go look for another one. Mademoiselle. We'd like a table, please. Uh, any little table will do. Yes, in what name did Mademoiselle's escorts make the reservation? Oh, uh, we didn't... Yes, think... I'm sorry, Mademoiselle. It's regrettable. But for this evening, all tables are taken. Pierre, no tables? Bonsoir, madame, for you have reservations, of course. This way, please. He gave them a table and they didn't have an escort. And when he saw us coming, he put the rope up. <sighs> we should have used our imagination. We should have... Laurie, don't. Don't use yours. You do such awful things with it. Excuse me, please. When the gentleman we were expecting arrives, will you tell him the ladies left because you didn't have a table? Oui, mademoiselle. The gentleman's name. Mr. Tommy Dooley from Guadalcanal. A certain moment, mademoiselle. Mr. Tom... Tommy Dooley? Oh, mademoiselle, there is a mistake. Of course we have a table for Mr. Dooley. The best of the inside. Follow me. Please, this way. S'il vous plaît. If you are in... My arms will know it's not a spell. We'll know it's real, but time will tell. How could you look him in the eye and tell him we were expecting Tommy Dooley? Well, he's important. The head waiter knows him. And it worked, didn't it? We're in. <laughs> that number. Boys, played it just for you. Gardenias. Mm -hmm. as big as sunflowers. Uh, did, did you say your name was... Uh... Eddie Hall. I'm the owner of the show. Just a little gift. 
we present them to all our important guests. Oh, but Mr. Holmes... Oh, that's very nice of you, and the music was wonderful. It reminded me so much of the night I was in Paris. Prince Dubonnet had just asked me to dance, and... Oh! Flory, <laughs> don't you think I mean... Pardon me. Molly and Mr. Dooley just arrived. Excuse me. Lori. Oh, thank you. Let's get out of here before we get into any more trouble. Oh, don't be silly. He has no way of finding out whether we know Dooley or not. Oh, what that'll do to you with your ideas. Try it. Go ahead. You old son of a gun. Eddie, shake hands with the Palomine, Dud Miller. Pleased to meet you. You're an optimist. Molly, we're late with the show. Will you get out from under that soap plate and get into your costume? Right after my number, I'll be back. Don't let Eddie bore you. Remember, I saw you first. <laughs> Always kidding. Oh, Pierre, I'll have you seated and we'll go around with the show. Take Mr. Dooley and his friend to their table. Oui, monsieur. Thanks a million, Eddie. And hurry back. We want you with us. <laughs> Maybe you'll change your mind when you see what's waiting for you at the table. <laughs> What do you mean by that? A big dinner, of course. A swell guy like that thinks of everything. This way, monsieur. It's Tommy Dooley. Had a boy, Dooley. 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 Come on, let's get out of here. Monsieur Dooley, your guest. There, didn't I tell you a guy like that thinks of everything? How do you do? How do you do? Gee, I didn't expect a surprise like this. You and us both. Yeah. It was nice of Eddie to invite you. I'm glad you're here. Oh, thank you, but, well, you see... I'll bet you two girls are actresses, huh? Oh, heavens no, we're just... We're a musical comedy. Really? What show are you with? Uh, Remember Me. No, I can't say that I do, but I just got back in town. That's I... the name of their show here on Broadway. Well, we'll have to see it. Splendid. We'll get you some tickets. Oh, I think we'd better be going. What's the idea? What did we do? And besides, we just met. You don't want to break my heart, do you? Well, I don't suppose there need be any rush about it. Good. At least we got one thing settled for the rest of the evening. <laughs> Whites and pretty bluebirds sing you out of bed. That sweet, sweet to tell you in that sweet way that there's a happier day ahead. When the red, red bobbins and the bob, bob whites and pretty bluebirds chirp their little too, they're just trying to sell you a bill of goods that we'll be out of the woods real soon. When the whistling on your windowsill. <laughs> Join along in their familiar song If you won't, the whip will will Oh, it's not so easy to be gay and breezy When the whole darn world is in a stew But to help the morale, won't you be a good pal? Won't you warble a chorus or two? Like the red, red bobbins and the bob, bob whites And the bluebirds do da do 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 Hep, hep, you can't stick me righteously. Speaking of birds, it's occurred to me. I know a new bird who's no blue bird. He can rock it, wait and see. You just heard the jitter bird jiving in a jumping key. Ah, oh, it's not so easy. To be gay, gay and breezy When the whole darn world is in a stew But to help your own mail, won't you be a good pal? Won't you warble a chorus or two? Like the red, red bombers and the bob, bob, white Bye. Hey. 
put over a song. And how. She's a swell gal, too. She and Eddie will be over in a minute to join us. They will? Oh, I think that'll be wonderful. I mean, I wonder if I could make a phone call. That's right, Uncle Herman. He'll never forgive us for not phoning him. Hey, wait a minute. What's the rush? Oh, well, we were just going to make a phone call. Oh, no, don't go. I'll have a phone brought to the table. Sit down. I've been talking to your friends, but I don't think Molly has met them. Introduce us. Introduce you? Yeah. Well, aren't they friends of yours? Well, I guess we're all a little mixed up. You see... Do you mean to say you didn't invite these girls here? Me? I invited them. Oh, now I think I'm beginning to get the angle. You figured I'd get lost in the traffic, huh? Oh, now, wait a minute, Molly. You know that I wouldn't do anything like that to you for the world. Tell her the truth. Did I invite oh, you? When the agent phoned and told us to come over, well, naturally, we thought that... Uh... Agent? What agent phoned you? How should I know? All he said was to see you about the trial. Don't you and... realize that this is Miss Lorraine from the musical comedy Remember Me? You see, we came right over from the theater, and I guess by mistake they seated us at this table. Just a minute. Remember me closed last night. But what's the difference? They're here now, and everybody's happy, aren't we? Well, if you don't remember me, naturally you know all the numbers. Oh, heaven said Betsy, yes, she knows them backwards by back and... Oh, gee. Well, that's fine. Why don't we ever try one out right now? I told you, I don't know anything about it. I think it's a swell idea, and we're all for it, aren't we, Miss Lorraine? Oh, I'd love to, but we have to catch a train in 40 minutes. We're joining a USO show in Washington. But this will only take a couple of minutes. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't. I, I have a cold. Oh, come on. Oh, there's no need for me to deliberately flaunt myself at laryngitis, is there? Come on. Well, it's too late to phone Uncle Herman now. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a big surprise for you. As a matter of fact, it's a bigger surprise to me than it'll be to you. You all remember me? I mean, I mean, the show remember me? And surely you'll remember her. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Miss Laura Lorraine in Don't Carry Tales. All right? Take it away, Charlie. <laughs> Listen, children, listen to your teacher. Pay attention and learn your ABCs. And when you grow up, you can be a quiz kid or a guest of honor on Information, Please. Listen, children, listen to your teacher. You gotta know your figures if you wanna be considered bright. Tell us more, oh teacher. Tell us more, more, more. Listen, children, listen to your teacher. Battles are won in the daytime. Ah, but history is made at night. Tell us more, oh teacher, tell us more. More? More. If you want to be teacher's pet, here's a little motto that you mustn't. No, you doesn't ever forget. Don't carry tales out of school, cause if you do, you're a fool. You mustn't tell everything you know And keep it to yourself that I love you so much Don't carry tales out of school You'll find it's a pip of a rule And though a busybody may insist Don't let on that we've kissed If you're a blabbermouth, you're off my list So don't be a stubborn mule, baby And don't carry tales out of school Tell us more, old teacher, tell us more Well, don't you think we ought to dance now? You'd better button up your upper lip A little slip may sink your ship If you're a blabbermouth, you're off my list So don't be a stubborn mule, baby Hush, shush Hey If as a lover you're a riot Don't let out a peep, just keep it quiet Don't carry tales out of school
terrific guy, that Malcolm on the drums. You were swell. Oh, thank you. May I have this dance? Uh-huh. Hold it. Thank you. I think it's swell that, that a big musical comedy star like you could come here on a blind date not knowing who you were going to meet. Oh, one gets tired of the usual bankers and millionaires and playboys. It's rather nice meeting someone different. Where do I come off? Does he have to dance every dance with her? Train number 61, Newark, New Brunswick, Elizabeth. Yes, Town, I don't think we were never coming Harrisburg, back. Nothing like a hamper of goodies to take Pittsburgh. on the train. You look like Santa Claus. As far as I'm concerned, it is Christmas. You don't know what the past few hours have meant to me, Lori. They were wonderful. You see, I had a terrible disappointment when I came home. You did how? Well, it sounds kind of goofy, but. While I was in Guadalcanal, a girl sent me a fan letter with her picture in it. <laughs> Boy, did I fall. Hook, line, and sinker. I could hardly wait till I got home to meet her. And now you find she doesn't like you? Oh, no, it was a bigger disappointment than that. I found she was married and that the picture she'd sent had been taken 15 years ago. Oh. <laughs> now you know what it means to meet a girl like you who's really on the level. The 12.30 for Trenton. Lori, come on, we'll miss our train. Baltimore. Oh, that's us. I guess we'll have to say goodbye now. Hey, wait a minute. We haven't got your address. Who's got a pencil? Oh, I have. Uh, give me a hug of paper, somebody, quick. Here, write it on the back of that magazine. Uh, we're stopping off to visit Kay's aunt in Baltimore first, so uh, if you want to write, you'd better send the letters in care of her. Uh, what's her address? 473 Oriole Street, and my aunt's name is Miss Minnie Pritchett. It'll be like doing time in the brig till we hear from you. I don't know what you mean, but it sounds awful nice. Pull out your arms. Uh, for the packages, I mean. Oh. Can you hold them all? Uh-huh. Both your hands full? I'm afraid they are. Not goodbye. Just good night. Good night. Come on, Lori, hurry up. Oh, goodbye. Uh, good night. Goodbye. Bye. Hey, how far is Baltimore from Washington? Oh, uh, it's about the same as it is from Washington to Baltimore. <laughs> What's that address? Hey, I forgot to tear it off the magazine. Hey, what happened, Hold that train! Hold that train to Me down about this job climbing these stairs every day will oh come on Lori. after two weeks you ought to be able to get your mind off new york they've probably forgotten all about us by now men are like that doug miller's the only one who ever treated me sweet and suggestive but i loved it mm, it was wonderful being a musical comedy star for a night i guess it's the nicest thing you've ever been well in your mind i mean You're a very naughty, so you got me. No, I know. You go down here. It's them. What do we do? Oh, run. We're trapped. Now where will we go? So you keep right on going and you get to 3361. Oh, hold on. That's the old 3354. That ain't right. Wait a minute. I'm wrong. You don't turn right. You turn left. Oh, the left. That's right. You mean my right? No, my right. Your left. You mean if I turn left, I'm right? No, my right, your left. My left? That's right. Why didn't I stay in Missoula? Never mind that. Peek out and see where they're going. Oh. Go on. It's safe. Let's get to the office quick. 3369. Here we are. Hey, wait. Uh, private. Enter 3368. Well, then it must be back that way. No, I give up. Wait a minute. Oh! What's the matter? It's them again. They're coming back. Here we are. 
3368. Yeah, finally. I'll wait outside here through the chief. Okay. I don't think I'll be very long anyway. Hey, square your hat. Where'd they go? Your hero went in next door where you have to work today. Oh. Well, I won't go in. I'll quit first. Duty, you youngsters are doing a grand job. I wish I could be out there with you. Wish you could too, Chief. And I would be if I could get back on active service. Just think of me, Chief Barney Briggs, lashed and battened down to a desk. Tough. Do you know if... Oh, why don't I shut my mouth? Where's that stenographer? That's you. Well, did you have a good time in New York? Couldn't have asked for a better. They gave me about everything but the sidewalks. Dinners, shindigs. Blew in a lot of your dough, huh? Oh, no. Met a girl who works in a nightclub. Everything free. Mm. Danced all night, every night. Well, uh, uh... Yeah, you're lucky you didn't get back here on crutches. Look at that. Plastered all over the papers with women. Well, now, Chief. Women? I hate them. I wouldn't take a second look at any of them. Hello. Hello, Briggsy. Is my little Cupie stepping out tonight? Oh, uh, yes, Admiral. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, do that, sir. <clears throat> you take my advice and keep away from them. Now, look, Chief. Duly, aviation ordnance man, second, distinguished service. Casualty, compound fracture left leg, transferred to Washington Special Duty and further medical examination. So you stopped off in New York and dashed yourself dizzy. You know you're supposed to take care of that bad leg? Who was she? Beautiful. Uh, I mean, uh, she's a musical comedy star. Just what I thought. She used you to get her pictures in the paper. She ran around with you to cash in on your publicity. Oh, no, Chief, you got that all wrong. I only saw her once. Well, that's once too often. See here, Dooley. The Navy doesn't want you kids to make fools of yourself. All this girl of yours wants is notoriety. She might even follow you here to Washington. You think there's a chance? But if she does, I'll have her locked up. I'll turn her over to the FBI. But don't you worry, Dooley. I'll protect you. That's my job, to see that you fellows aren't exploited. You don't know women. No? No, you haven't been in the Navy long enough. But you can depend on me. I know. Swell. Got any telephone numbers? Well, I've got a book full of top. Wait a minute. What do you mean? You're here on business. The Bureau of Aeronautics wants to report on everything you've learned about Japs and Jap tactics. Here, this young lady will take down your report in shorthand. What's your name, miss? Jones. A little late, aren't you? Yes, sir. Here's my department record. Miss Jones, it's Mr. Dooley. How do you do? You work with him to get his report out. Use that office in there. Yes, sir. That's all. Now, get to work and keep your mind on it. OK, Chief. Uh, shall I take dictation, or would you rather? Hmm? I said, shall I take notes, or...? Do you dance? Oh, not during office hours. Oh. Well, there was something about you that... I mean, it reminded me of... No, couldn't be. I'm ready, Mr. Dooley. Look, I don't want to work. I want to go to Baltimore. Where is it? Uh, I think it's over there behind the Navy Yard. Well, that's something. I'll be a little closer to her when I'm in my bunk. Miss Jones, have you ever been in love? Well, I... No, you look too sensible. For days, I've been walking around in circles. I've even been talking to myself. You have? That's the way you get. I met a wonderful girl and lost her address. That's why I have to go to Baltimore. She's staying there someplace. I've got to find her. You know, the first time we met, the first time we looked at each other, it was just like, like coming in with your wings flapping. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, she's gorgeous. She, she takes your breath away. She makes you feel, well, were we ever tattooed? No, but... Well, that's just the way she makes you feel. Like somebody sticking needles in you, all over. <sighs> Am I boring you? Gosh, no. Oh, no, sir. But what's the use? I'll never find her in Baltimore. I'd have to go around ringing doorbells. Oh, but, but perhaps if she knows you're here in the Navy Department and anxious to see her again, she might telephone you. Do you think she would? Well, if I were in love as much as you seem to be... Oh, I'm off my top. Well, I'd phone you. Oh, Miss Jones, you've saved my life. You're a great girl. Wonderful. I'll never forget. Hey, can you leave your work for a minute? Oh, 
Miss Jones, Mr. Miller. Hiya. The OWI wants you right away. Miss Jones thinks Miss Lorraine might call me up from Baltimore. Hey, suppose she does while I'm gone. I'll take the message. Swell, don't leave the phone. Not an inch. Tell her I... Well, tell her I'll be right back. Get her number. Come on. Have I got my fingers crossed? Hey, didn't you tumble? Tumble? What do you mean? In there, that girl. Uh, isn't she the one we met in New York? You know, the remember me girl. What are you talking about? That's Miss Jones. She typewrites with her fingers. Oh, yeah? For two girls look that much alike, she'd have to do it with mirrors. Look, if she was the same one, what would she be doing here as a steno? Why would she... Oh, uh, hiya, Chief. I thought you were working. What's the matter? Isn't that girl all right? Oh, absolutely. I got called over to the OWI. Uh, excuse me, Chief. That girl in there, how long has she been working here? Her report card says about a week. She's out of town. New York? No, she came here on government transportation direct from Missoula, Missouri. Highly recommended. Don't you two try to start anything. Oh, no, 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 no. We wouldn't. <laughs> Extension 47. <laughs> Hello, Kay. Everything's wonderful. I'm going to take Mr. Dooley's report, and he loves me. He said he did. He's been trying to find me. Didn't he recognize you? No, he doesn't know I'm me, but he loves me ever since he first met me. But, Laurie, what do you do now? You can't let him go on thinking that... But I have to. He's crazy about Laura Lorraine, not Laura Jones, and... Why, yes, of course I'll give him your message. Goodbye. What was that? Why, Miss Lorraine. Miss Lorraine? Well, why did you let her go? Why didn't I you... I thought you were out of the office. But I wasn't. I was right there. But I was... She said she was leaving Baltimore for Washington, and if you wanted to, you could meet her tonight. Tonight? Where? Right in front of the statue of Benjamin Franklin at 8 o'clock. Miss Jones, you don't know what you're saying. I'm the happiest guy in the world. Wait a minute. You've got to help me. Where will I take her? Every place in Washington is packed with people. I want to be alone with her. Someplace, if I take her in my arms, she'll just naturally cuddle up. Maybe a carriage ride. No, uh, the driver hears everything you say. A walk in the park? That's worse. Too many people. You hear everything they say. I've got it. What? A moonlight picnic. And if you could have someone put up a box supper for two and get a portable radio. I can get those all right, but, but where in Washington? Why not ride on the mall? Well, the moonlight on the water would be awfully romantic. And I've heard, sometimes, awfully lonesome. Miss Jones, you're wonderful. You're terrific. You're... Just showing her a Japanese stranglehold, Chief. Well, if this keeps up, she won't be here long enough to use it. for your thoughts. Oh, I was thinking of your secretary and what a lovely person she was to suggest this place. It must be nice to have such a sweet girl in your office. I'd much rather think of the sweet girl I have in my arms. I wonder if you'll always feel that way towards me, Tommy. Always. Even if something happened? Of course, darling. I wish I could be sure. <laughs> what makes you say that? Oh, I don't know. I... Lori. Yes? When a fellow's liable to go away, maybe for a long time, do you think he has a right to, well, to ask a girl to wait for him? If he loves her, I think he has. But you're joining a USO show. You don't know where you'll oh, be. I haven't had much luck with the USO show, Tommy. There's too many big stars ahead of me. I was thinking of going back home to Missouri, uh, Kansas City, and and forgetting the stage. Well, that's a fine thing. With all your talent? Well, it's ridiculous. Oh, no, it isn't. I don't mind giving up the stage. And besides, Washington wouldn't be the same if you went away. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to the music of Charlie Spivak and his band coming to you from the opening tonight of Washington's newest and smartest nightclub, the Club Diplomacy. What's the matter with us? There's a solution to our whole problem. Eddie Hall. Why, he's right here in Washington opening up his club tonight. That Miss, um, uh, you know, the singer. Well, she's been sending me telegrams and letters begging oh, me to come. Tommy, we'll I... grab a taxi and go right over to the club oh, diplomacy. But listen, I... Not to one word. I'm going to make Eddie Hall give you a break if it takes an act of Congress. <laughs> Oh, 
But all kidding aside, folks, you've made me the happiest boy in the world. Why, just two minutes ago, Senator Novakov stopped me and he said, Mr. Hall, <laughs> called me by my maiden name. <laughs> Mr. Hall, he said, I want to congratulate you. Your opening is the biggest that we've ever had in Washington. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now I know what he meant. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, that cheerful little earful of corn, Miss Molly McKay. Ladies and gentlemen, attention, please. You've got to listen to me. Here's an extra special communique. Just arrived today from Washington, D.C. Pretty little milkmaid, milk that cow. Say there, you grab a hold of that plow. We gotta do a heap of farming now. We're on a Yankee Doodle hay ride. Run your little tractor, stack that wheat. Your big boy and his buddy must eat. We need a lot of starch for marching feet. We're on a Yankee Doodle hay ride. Oh, there ain't gonna be no hold down till we knock the foe down. Neighbor, we just can't slow down. Got to go, got to go like blazes. Soldiers in khaki, sailors in blue. Cannot be any prouder than you. A pair of overalls is a uniform, too. We're on a Yankee Doodle hay ride. Don't do 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 We gotta have beans and gotta have tomatoes. Come along, rain, we gotta have crops. I away corn and I the whole potatoes. Fatten that cat, we got to have chops. If you wanna win, you've gotta pitch in. If you wanna pitch in, then you've gotta pitch. Hey, 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 are you going our way? Way down yonder in the cornfield. Sam is calling you to come and hit your whack into a Yankee doodle. Cock a doodle doodle, hey, ride.
folks drop in is all I needed to make the evening complete. Oh, you're sweet to say that, Mr. Hall. Looks like you're having a big opening night, Eddie. A sellout. Hey, what's going on between you two, anyway? Hmm, I get it. Well, he's a great guy, Miss Lorraine. I've known this son of a gun ever since he wore three-cornered pants. As a matter of fact, I think I loaned you the dough to buy your first long ones. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that shows you where I stand. And you think he wouldn't do me a favor? Favor? What do you want? Are you short? Do you need dough? Oh, no, no. But there is something else, Eddie. Just ask. You got it. You're going out on a limb. Let me. For you, I'll chop it off. Mr. Hall, You're I... sure? Positive. Ask me anything. It's done. Okay. I want you to put Miss Lorraine in your show. Did you say, remember how good she was in New York? Well, she'll be twice as good here in Washington. Didn't I tell you he'd do it? Didn't I say he was a great guy? I think you're one of the nicest persons in the world, Mr. Hall, and I appreciate what you've done for me. What's the matter? Are you sick? Oh, no. No, no. Just a little dizzy from climbing out on that limb so fast. What hit me, a P-38? I hit you. When you signed up that Lorraine girl, you didn't invite trouble with me. You insured it. Now, wait a minute. Let's talk this thing over sensibly, Molly. You better stay down for a full count, brother. I'll hang a shanty on your other eye that'll look like a duplex. I'll go for help, Mr. Hall. Help nothing, sister. You come back in a few minutes, and what's left to him, you can kick under a rug. Now, listen, Molly. You got this thing all wrong, I tell you. I was forced to sign up Miss Lorraine. Tommy Dooley made me do it. Oh, yes? What did he use for persuasion? Friendship. What do you think? I gave in because he was going to hit me with a piece of wet lettuce? I don't care why you gave in. All I know is I'm through. I'm walking out on you right now. <coughs> Molly. That Lorraine Dane took Dooley away from me in New York. But I'll choke before I let her parade in front of me in Washington. But she isn't going to parade herself in front of you. You're the star of my show. She can't compare with you. You're my drawing card. Molly. <laughs> don't you think anything of me? Anything? Hmm. Everything. Everything I can think of. Wait a minute. For once in your life, be sensible. Oh, Even if it's only for the novelty. Excuse me. Hmm, a Marine. And excuse me, he says. How do you want him to come in? Throw in hand grenades? How do you do? What can I do for you? I'm looking for someone. Miss Lorraine, as you call her. It's her again. She gets them all. Look, brother, will you please go away? I got all the trouble I can use. Yeah? Well, you're going to get some more if I don't find her. I happen to be engaged to her. That's fine. Now, if you'll just run... You're engaged to her. That's right. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. She gave me this the night I took her to the train. You took her to the train? Look, bud, you got the wrong party. You didn't take her to the train that night. I tell you, I did. I wasn't letting those guys beat my time. But they took her to the train, too. Oh, they horned in. She didn't want them. She says, George, I'm just being nice to them because they're doing their bit. You're the only one I love. She said that to you? Sure. Of course, she's nice to all the fellas. That's why she's such a popular pinup girl. Thousands of guys have her picture. Pinup girl? You mean I've got a popular pinup girl on my show and I'm not letting the public know about it? Um, Miss Lorraine won't be here until tonight, so why don't you and I sort of plan a little surprise for her? Well, that's fine. Pardon us. Wait a minute, Molly. You're not going any place with him. If she wants to, who's going to stop her? Yeah, you keep out of this. War is war. Oh, and by the way, um, reserve a table for Miss Lorraine's fiancé. He's going to be our honored guest tonight. You look good, Ed. <laughs>
step out once too often. I'm getting mighty sick and tired of toting a torch for you. So just be careful, brother. I too can find another. Remember anything that you do, I can do too. Once too often, I'll get the go by once too often, and then you'll have to change your tune and sing in a different key. That line that you've been using will cease to be amusing. It's gonna boomerang when you come looking for me. You're a wizard when it comes to crying, a master in the art of alibying. Go on and do your tall and fancy lying, baby, but you will say you're sorry once too often. You're gonna weep, but I won't soften. You're gonna whimper like a pup the day I catch up with you. Step out, go on and show off. The lid will blow off. You're gonna give my heart the business once too often. <laughs> Hey, where are you going, sailor? I'm going backstage and pop a mighty important question. Keep your fingers crossed that I get the right answer. Come on now, girls. You go and get ready for your next number. Jesus, you. Hello. Oh, Tommy. Um, can you spare a minute? Well, I... I... Well, I I've got a surprise. It's for Miss Lorraine. I thought maybe you'd want to get in on it. Well, you bet your life I would. What is it? Show you. Uh, Tommy, do they meet George Davis? How are you? Very well, thanks. How are you? T, isn't this wonderful, you meeting him? Oh, well, sure, but uh, I don't quite understand. What's this all about? Well, uh, George is Miss Lorraine's fiancée, only she doesn't know it yet. Oh, yes, she does. She told me so herself. Oh, I mean, she doesn't know you're here. I don't get this. You say that... Well, she doesn't know he's in town. You see, we were going to wait until after her number, then all of us were going to walk in on her. Oh, will she be happy. The success in the show and getting her boyfriend back all in one night. And she deserves it. She's got what it takes. That, my friend, is an understatement. Are you a friend of hers, too? Well, in a way, of course, it was only casual, very casual. Thanks, Molly, for saving me from doing something very silly. Glad to have seen you. Best of luck to you both. He's not a very sociable guy, is he? Oh, he's been looking out of a porthole too long. Well, what are we waiting for? I'll change all my advertising. I'll bill you as the nation's number one pinup girl. Everybody in Washington will be packing the joint. I'll give you the biggest... Surprise! Look who's here. Lori. How do you do? Well, don't you remember me? 
Oh, yes, of course. It was at a dinner party, wasn't it? Now, was it in Pittsburgh? It was in Missoula at a dance, and you know it. Well, you're engaged to him. Don't, don't you remember? Molly, if this is going to be a fight, remember, it's a private one. George, now I place you. Well, it's about time we got to know each other better. And maybe it's about time we had something understood. You see, I'm engaged to 500 boys, but that doesn't say I'm going to marry each one of them. I'll say you're not. No, you can include Tommy Dooley in that 500, too, because you're not going to marry him either. I fixed that. What do you mean, you fixed it? Oh, I introduced George to Tommy, and I told him you two were engaged. You did? Where is he? Well, from the way he left by now, he's probably flying over the equator. Oh. Now you've really fixed it. Well, how did I know she was engaged to 500 other guys? You didn't want to get married anyway, did you? Dear Tommy, it is hard to explain what happened last night. There is so much I would like to tell you. If you will see me, I'm sure I can make you understand and you won't think so badly of me. Please leave a message with your stenographer. I will phone her. Sincerely, Laura Lorraine. Miss Jones, if Miss Lorraine calls, tell her I don't want any part of her. You don't? Never. That's being awfully hard-hearted. She made a fool of me. What do you expect me to do, congratulate her? Maybe you don't understand. I think her letter was beautiful. I'm sure she's terribly unhappy. Oh, now, don't let her fool you. She's probably laughing up her sleeve. She's engaged to another guy. Uh, the chief was right. He told me she was playing me for a chump all the time. Why are you sticking up for her? Oh, I'm not sticking up for her. I think she's a silly person who probably didn't realize how serious. Baloney. Let's skip the whole thing. I don't want to think about it. It's over. From now on, it's a thing of the past. What did I tell you, you irresponsible sea going Romeo? Look at that. She's done it. And she had the colossal gall to pull it right under the nose of the Navy Department. She's followed you to Washington. Didn't I tell you she was out to exploit you? Well, now, wait a minute, Chief. You don't have to worry about her anymore. I brushed her off for good last night. One with a bow line like that? Well, tell me, how could you do it? What's the difference? All that matters is we're washed up, and that's final. You sure? Positively. She's out of my life forever. Well. Forever? Yes, forever. Oh, I had it coming. I was a sap to fall for an actress in the first place. I'm not the type, and I should have known it. But you're being so hasty. I'm not being hasty, I'm just being sensible. If I had a brain in my head, I'd fall for a girl like, like you. A girl who's sincere and honest and has both feet on the ground. Did you say, like me? Yes, you. You wouldn't think of deceiving a fellow or lying to him. You're the kind of a girl a fella needs. She he's going to fall right down on my head. What'd you say? Oh, or oh, I said I broke the lead. Hey, wait a minute. What are you doing tonight? Uh, I've got a date. Break it. I'm taking you to dinner. Have you ever been to the club diplomacy? Well, not exactly. Well, that's where we're going. Dooley, come in here. Okay, Chief, coming. I'll be back in a minute. Talk yourself out of this one, Laura Jones. Your hat, sir. I'm sorry, Mr. Dooley, but I don't think it's right for us to come here. After all, I'm, I'm your stenographer and people might talk. Nonsense. You're not going to run into anybody you know. And besides, they'll probably stick us behind a marble pillar. Telephone, Mr. Holder, calling you from backstage. Thanks. Hi, Eddie. Tommy! I want to talk to you. Be with you in just a second. Mario, give Mr. Dooley a ringside table. This way, please. Nice break. Mm. What? Miss Lorraine isn't here yet. But her number goes on in five minutes. I'll be right there. Good evening, the single, sir? Yes, I'd like to be pretty well down front. I'm kind of hard of hearing. Yes, sir, this way, please. Yeah. Have you had any luck? No, sir, and I've tried calling every place I can think of, Mr. Hall. Yeah, including the receiving hospital. This is all your fault. If you hadn't brought that Marine backstage last night, I wouldn't be in this chance. Now, listen, brother, don't start throwing punches at me. You better figure out what you're going to tell that audience out there. 
Tommy Dooley is out front. Maybe he can tell us where she is. Stay on that phone. And with the dinner, I want the best champagne in the house. Yes, sir. Excuse me, Mr. Dooley, but isn't this a rather expensive way to get even? Do you think that's the only reason I brought you here? I can't think of any other, can you? Well, uh, let's not talk about it. Miss Lorraine goes on in two minutes, and then you can see how little she means to me. Oh, I wouldn't be at all surprised if she didn't go on tonight. What makes you say that? By the tone of her letter. She sounded awfully upset. Well, she should be. Pardon me, Tommy. I meet my secretary, Miss Jones, Mr. Hall. How do you do? Good evening. Have you talked to Miss Lorraine today? Oh, and what's more, I don't care if I ever do. Oh, boy, am I in a spot. She's supposed to go on right now, and she hasn't shown up. Do you think anything's happened to her? Oh, I don't know. I've called every place in town, including the receiving hospitals. Have you tried the morgue? The morgue? Well, you don't think for a minute she can... No, 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 wait. Don't get excited. You know, people can be missing without being dead. Oh, Miss Jones, why didn't you make me get in touch with her this morning? Well, don't just stand there. Why don't you do something? There's only one thing I can do. Announce to the crowd that she won't appear tonight. I'm not thinking about your show. I'm worried about Miss Lorraine. We've got to find her. Well, don't jump on me. If you hadn't walked out on her last night... Pardon me, Mr. Hall. May I speak with you? You know, what is it? Miss McKay wants to know if you want her to go on first. Certainly. She'll have to. Tell her to get ready. Yes, sir. What do you mean, if I hadn't walked out on her? Listen, children, listen to your teacher. Pay attention and learn your ABCs. And when you grow up, you can be a quiz kid or a guest of honor on information, please. Listen, children, listen to your teacher. You gotta know your figures if you wanna be considered bright. Tell us more, old teacher, tell us more, more, more. Listen, children, listen to your teacher. A boy plus a girl plus a rendezvous adds up to something divided by two. Tell us more, old teacher, tell us more, much more, tell us more, teacher. That you mustn't know you tassin't ever forget. Don't carry tales out of school. Cause if you do, you're a fool. You mustn't tell everything you know. And keep it to yourself that I love you so much. Don't don't tell tall tales, make it a rule. And though a busybody may insist, don't let on that we've kissed. If you're a blabbermouth, you're off my list. So don't be a stubborn mule, baby. Don't carry tales. Tell us more, old teacher. Tell us more. There's nothing but ridicule for a blabbermouth who breaks the rule. Don't carry tales out of school. a blonde bomber. Oh, I don't know. I was engaged to her once. What, you two? What is this, an epidemic? Just about. She's engaged to 500 other guys. Here comes one of them now. Wait a minute. How dare you disobey orders? Didn't I tell you to stay away from her? Didn't you tell me this morning you were through? Yeah, but look, Chief, I gotta find out what this is all about. I'll tell you what it's all about. She's out to trap you. You're all wrong. She's engaged to a Marine. She is not. He just told me it was all off. Are you sure? Certainly I'm sure. I told you you don't know anything about women. Thanks. Wait a minute. Where are you going? To take your advice, Chief, and learn about women. Hello there. Long time no see. <clears throat> no, you don't, Tommy. Oh, now, Eddie. No, not now. now but, oh, Eddie, be but wait a minute. She's changing her costume for the next number.
very merry widow. The merry widow used to go for waltzes, and she danced a minuet surprisingly swell. But she threw her waltzes away. Yes, the widow is hep today. Now the little lady likes to do the rumba. And she really does it socko at the Stork and El Morocco, where they say she knows her sambas very, very well. The merry widow used to go for operas. In the royal box, she looked majestically swell. Now she gives her tickets away, and she's right in the groove today. For the little lady likes a bit of boogie-woogie. And she traded Raviata for a trumpet's ra-ta-ta-ta. And they say she digs her jiving very, very well. When it was tea time, she used to stop in for a cup of tea with Mrs. Abercrombie. But now at tea time, she likes to drop in for a double scotch and soda or a zombie. The merry widow wore the smartest dresses. In the sheerest black, she looked excitingly swell. But she packed her pretties away, wears a uniform every day. Now the little lady has no time for dancing. Does her job with great devotion. She's a cinch for big promotions. And they say she does her duties very, very well. Very, very well. Very, very well. Over the left flank, heart, heart. 